Hello, happy readers. Today I'm going to show you how to do the Starburst medallion piece that we uh, debuted in early November. And hopefully some of you have gotten kits already for this and we will be having our kits back on. So if you missed out on those, so there are a few available still on our Etsy and that will be up line very soon. I just wanted to, before I get started, thank you all for your love and support. It has been um, wonderful to know how much uh, you care and um, it's been very helpful for us. Uh, and now, I know this is different. We're not doing the live this time. Um, so this is pre-recorded. I just felt that this was the best way to do it right now in our circumstances and I wanted to make sure that we shared this piece with you. So we do have the Starburst um, medallion PDF and JPEG forms up on our Just Beat It Happy Beaters group and the JPEG form on our, um, on our Facebook page. <laughs> I feel so out of practice because I haven't got to be with you in so long and it's been um, a while so I but I'm very excited to start trying to do beat with you again um, so you can find those there uh, with it I am where I decided to chain make mine into a pair of earrings and of course they are perfect for a necklace and if you want to put a wire hook, they would be gorgeous as an ornament on a tree or even on our mantle. That's usually what I end up doing is sticking the on my mantle behind me. <laughs> um, so anyway, let's get to this beading, right? Let's see if I remember how to switch this. So we'll be making this beautiful pendant or as you saw, I was wearing mine as earrings are actually quite light considering the size or an ornament these are three of the color ways that we put together that um so i just wanted to show them off real quick i'm going to be working on this colorway today i'll put that over here move these over um i'm going to I have my kit that has a bunch of stuff, but before I do that, let's go over what you might need as far as tools besides the kit. You need two chain nose pliers if you are attaching the jump ring on the top for a pendant. So you'll need those. You'll need some toothpicks to apply glue, but also to um, kind of help lift the piece up when you go to glue. Speaking of glue, you need some sort of um, adhesive to attach your crystals to the filigree piece. E6000 is a great one to use. It's readily available all over the place. Um, a scratch piece of paper will be great for the glue to glue on, having it as a glue on surface um, so you don't get your mat glue, glue on your mat. A pair of tweezers could be handy to pick up the chatons so you can grab them and kind of move them. A wipey or I have a paper towel that's wet to kind of try to wipe off any excess glue before it dries. And that brings us to our kit. Our kit What's inside the kit here is, pull that out, we have Gem Duo Color 1. They'll be labeled A in our instructions. Gem Duo Color 2 being labeled B in our instructions. We have Super Duos. Size 11 seed beads, 
some crystal chitons. Those are the ones that are pointed back instead of a flat back. You can also use flat backs if you do this um, with your own filigree pieces, but the point going to sit inside little holes in the filigree so it's kind of nice so we're using it also um the chitons have a uh, because of the point back it actually has more facets and more reflection so it's kind of adds to the sparkle we have a filigree piece this is um a 48 millimeter filigree piece i believe there is a little bit of six pound fire line and a large jump ring if you're turning it into the pendant. So it has something to hang. And then a size 10 needle. I am going to pull out my thread because I'm going to need that. Uh, make sure you don't lose that jump ring. I actually. The first take on this, I dropped it, so we started over. So I'm going to pull out my thread, leave that jump ring in the bag so that I don't lose it. I'm going to put my chitons to the side. Our super duos and size 11 C beads go in later, so I'm going to move those up for a second. And also side, um, our B, we're going to be starting out with our A, so I'm going to do that first I have that out first and we're going to be needing our filigree piece very soon it feels like it's tilting a little bit but I guess it's okay um I'm gonna pull out my needle Pull out my thread and you just need one yard you can also do this with wildfire so if you don't have six pound fire line you can do this with um, the wildfire also probably do it with um, eight pound fire line too but we did ours with six let's get Move that out. You can use uh, some thread conditioner if you need to on your on your thread. That is optional. Thread my needle. For those that are not used to using fire line or wildfire, sometimes what you need to do is flatten the end with your fingernail or a pair of pliers and I just kind of run my fingernail over it and kind of a few times and it kind of flattens that end a little bit. I also pull the thread between my fingers so that I can't see it but I know that it's in this little section right here and then I aim the opening of the eye between my fingers and I kind of wiggle down, wiggle down and it pulls it right through. Uh, it does take a little bit of practice. I've been doing it for a while, so it's pretty easy for me now to do it. But even I sometimes don't make it through the eye and I have to do it a couple times before it works. So don't get discouraged if that doesn't work as quickly for you. I'm going to pull out you need eight of these beads we do have 10 in here just so that if there's a clog hole you can um you have an extra to spare we are going to check these holes on both on all of on both holes these are Gem duos and super duos have two holes and you sometimes when they come since they don't come on a string sometimes these we don't know if there's clogged holes so by taking my needle and running through the holes just to make sure they're not clogged that's why there's a couple extra just so that you have the ability
to like substitute one you know you don't have to worry about a clog hole because usually there's just like one in a batch every so often some colors are worse than others some shapes are worse than others so i've had like a batch of one color in maybe super duos that is like really bad and i keep having clogged holes sometimes you can, it's just like little bits of of um glass from just from the factory that just got into the hole and sometimes it is the finish and sometimes it just doesn't have a hole so if it doesn't have a hole you're kind of out of luck that's why checking them first because you don't want to string them all up and then have the you know you don't want it to um get get strung up and then find out that you don't have a hole right so there, the Gem Duos have a front and a back. I don't know why it's not auto-focusing on me, so I'm going to be trying, I'm going to probably have to um, bear with me as I re remember to check that. So this is the front side. It's kind of beveled a little bit, and the back side is is flatter. As you can see, the, the black side is flatter and the front side is beveled. So with the beveled side up, with the top side up, you're going to go through the bottom hole from right to left. And this is going to set us up so that the, the beadwork works easily in our hands. Um, if you go the other way, you just want to make sure that you're doing it in the same direction, regardless if you'd like to do it on the left to right or right to left. You can even do the top hole if you wanted to. Um, like if you're left-handed to get the same look, you could probably go, you could go through the top hole left to right and it'd be in the same position as what I'm doing. But it really doesn't matter as long as you put them all in the same way. So I'm just Getting all of these, making sure, see that there's the bevel side and that's the flat side. Whoops, I lost that one. So let's get those, that back on. I'm gonna pull those down until I have about a six to eight inch tail. And now I'm going to go through all of the same holes once more. And this is going to form a circle with my beads. Now it's not going to be a perfect circle yet because it's really hard to get that gap. So if I go through this very first one where the tail's coming out of, oops, and we're upside down. It's okay if it's upside down. I'm going to just go through that first one real quick. And once I do that, I can, and when I pull it, that will help cinch it together into a circle. Now, if I keep it cinched like this, see how it doesn't lay flat? I'm gonna actually let it loosen enough so you're gonna see a little bit of thread. But what's nice is once you put it on the filigree, you won't see it. It's not as visible. Um, the fil It kinda, kinda blends with the filigree. Even if you are using the smoke on the other colors that it kind of just blends so that's a very nice part so we do need to hook it to our filigree
three piece. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, I like to, there is a kind of a front and back to this filigree piece. One side is a little bit more domey and the other side is a little concave. It's very minute. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Um, to me, it doesn't, um, aesthetically, it looks pretty close to the same once it's finished but one thing that I did notice is is that the back side or what's considered the back side where it's concave can be a little bit rougher on the bare skin so I like to actually have that in the front and so then the uh, the right side is softer is less um because you're not feeling those cut edges and they're not it's not like they're sharp it's just that it does have a, you have a little bit more texture that you can feel and some people are going to be more sensitive to that and because of that I like to have that upwards because you're not going to feel it and as you can see it looks fine and I have the the bevel side on the other side So I'm going to have it upside down or back side up. I'm going to lay this. On top, we are going to hook it. Um, I'm going to use my all as a pointer. We are going to be attaching in these little like petal shape beads around the center here. So the full petals is how we're going to attach, is where we're going to attach. So I'm going to lay this, make sure that these gem duos lay flat. Um, I did not tie off my tail yet because I want to keep making sure that it's not too tight or too loose. So by leaving it here, I can pull it a little tighter if I need to, or I can loosen it if I need to. And I'm going to start attaching this piece to the, fil the beads to the filigree. So I'm going to start, I'm in the bottom hole, the first hole of this gem duo, I'm going to go down a petal, one that's kind of on the right. Oops, don't get your tail caught. I should put that tail to the side there. And then up the very, so I'm gonna go from behind and go up through the petal on the left. I'm going to skip one. So this is the gem do I started. We're going to skip this one and we're going to go into the bottom hole of the very next one. This is going to get be a little wiggly at first because we haven't attached it. But once it starts going, it'll stay in place. We want to make sure that that thread goes behind here and see how see how it goes right in there behind the bead behind the filigree behind that bead and now I'm in this filigree but we're going to skip or this gem duo but we're going to skip we're we're not really skipping. We're going from this one that we came up and through, and now we're going to go down the next paddle. Go up the following, the one on the left, the next paddle.
go. Th so this one we went through. So we skip a gem duo and go through the next one. Right now you can see that thread and that's okay. It just makes it easier to get in and out of this. And once we go all the way around, we will tighten it a little bit more. So I'm going through the very next. So um, I, I was coming out of this gem duo and we're skipping this one and going into the very next one. Rotate so it makes it easier. Go down a petal. Get your tail out of the way. Up a petal. Through the beam, that bottom hole. Now I can kind of, since I made it almost all the way around, I'm going to pull my tail a little bit to kind of cinch it up a little. So yeah, that looks better. Now it's not as, as gappy. And then I'm coming out of where are we on this? We're coming out of this petal, went through this bead, go down this petal. Up the next. And we're back to go through this one that we started with. Pull my tail to make sure it's all nice and snug. I pulled the tail, pulled the working thread, and now this is not coming off. So there's like, if you flip over to the back, you're going to see four little threads that go, that are hooking it to the filigree. They're not too bad, right? So if you are catching us, since we didn't aren't doing lives, I, if you have questions while you're doing this, go ahead. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and make comments on, in, you know, go ahead and make a comment and I'll try to get back to you and see, answer that question. If you are having, um, if you're on YouTube, you probably could do the same. I'm not used to that part, but we're going to try to get that on our YouTube. Uh, you can also take a picture of what you are doing or, or even just um, email me at Joyce at just bead it conquered dot com why did i almost say dot net dot com so you can always email questions if you get stuck there and i'll try to answer that also i know it's a little different because i'm not doing it live so i can't help the questions right off the bat but um but hopefully that will help I'm going to now need to step up into the second hole of our gem duo. And what we're going to do is make a loop on the back side of the gem duo to so that we're still facing in the same direction. Now, sometimes when we step up into a second hole, we just go and we're kind of like U-turning and going in the opposite direction. And that allows that ends that works um, well on some things, but it does make a thread go on 
on the edge. And depending on what thread you're using, sometimes that shows. So what I'm gonna do instead is going to go through the top hole. So we are, we've been going through the bottom holes right to left, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this top hole. I'm gonna go right to left through the top hole. And that is gonna form a little loop that we're gonna let slide to the back. And see how it just goes right on the back of that gem duo. Awesome that you can't see it from the front and you really could barely see it from the back because we have our filigree piece there, right? So that works out pretty darn nifty. We are ready for some Super duos now. Again, you're going to need to check the holes of your super duos. Make sure that they have two holes that are not clogged because we are going to be using both of these holes. In this round, you are going to need 16, so you can go ahead and check 16 or you can check them as you go. I am going to quickly, or mostly quickly, try to, well, look at this. I actually can see the holes through my camera, so I'm not even gonna poke through them. Okay, there's, um, so that's a trick. You could get your camera out on your phone and set it up and see if you could see them because sometimes it's hard to see them in it with the bare eye, but under this and when it's zoomed in, I can see these nice beautiful holes. So I have six and that's um, 12 and I need 16. So let's get four more of these. So now I'm all know for sure those are good. I'm gonna put these off to the side. Well, that's pretty darn nifty, I think. Okay, let's go back to this beautiful piece. And we're gonna put two super duos between each top holes of the gem duos. So we're gonna go one. And super duos are great because they are don't have a front nor or a back, so it doesn't matter how you pick them up. You can just grab a hole. And we are gonna go from this top hole right to left, and then we're gonna go over to the left one on, and go from right to left through that hole. And that's gonna bring two super duos there. And I'm gonna do that again. We're gonna do this all the way around. We'll add two super duos. Maybe, get on there. Come on, you could do it. Thank you. And then go into the top hole. Oh, <laughs> be careful and not so down into the filigree. <laughs> you want to still be on the top of the filigree. Whoa, I did that twice. So we're going to back out. We're going to try to back out. <laughs> oh, so silly. So silly. Take these off. So when you're going through those that super duo, you're going to make sure that you don't go accidentally go down like I did in this case, and I'm caught inside the filigree. Out of all the samples that I've done, I have not done that. And now that I'm doing this for, for the video, I am. But that means it's possible that to happen, and now we could correct ourselves, right? You don't have to feel bad if it happens to you because it happened to me too. All right, so now I'm back over here, coming out of here, going over to this one. I'm gonna be very careful to not go through that filigree. <laughs> oh, but you know what would be ha nice is if I actually put 
two super duos on. Well, this is just going to be an entertaining video, isn't it? All the goofs that I am making. But I love it because I'm beating again. And hopefully you are beating with this video. Or watching and then beating later. Get two more. I do miss everyone beating with everyone and I cannot wait until we are back to do that again live at some point. But right now we are going to enjoy this moment. Each moment, right? So I'm just putting two super duos around between each gem duo, that first color A, color 1A. Try not to get my tail comp. Okay, so I made it all the way around. Next thing I'm going to do is step, or I'm going to go through these two first two super duos in that same hole. So I'm coming originally to my last two super duos that I added. I added it, I went through the gem duo, and now I'm going to go through these two bottom holes of this the super duos so I'm coming out of the super duos now I am going to step up into the top hole and again I'm going to do it by going in the same direction so that there's going to be a loop behind the super duo and not on the side of the super duo. This is a great technique when you are don't have to worry about a you know, you have a true front and back and that way the loops can go into the back. If you have a piece that you are doing that doesn't have a true front and back, this this technique doesn't work as well. But um, it is ha nice when with something like this. And as you can see, if you if I flip it over, there's that little thread of looped behind and you can barely tell that it's there. Next to do is getting our we want to get um our next row is going to have some of the seed beads so we're going to pour out some of the seed beads it is also going to have our um b our color two gem duo so i'm going to check and make sure eight of these have good holes Um, I find these ones, even if I was to be able to see the holes, they look sometimes open, um, but they are kind, sometimes tricky. They trick me and they look open and they're not open. So that's why I am checking. Although I have to say, I just realized we're not going to be using the top hole on these. So I guess I'm being silly and doing this, but now that I started, I'm going to finish. Um, it also makes me remember to do it at, oops, see, now this is why it's nice to have a, that one has a little blemish, so I'm going to put that one off to the side, and being that I have extra, that one's a little bit better, so I am going to keep that one in, and my other two, put those away, I don't need those, and we are going to check 16, or 14, 16 more super duos and I'm going to use my camera this time for this to make sure 
because I could see the holes so nice in this. Okay, that is seven, ten. Look at that. Okay, all of them look good, so I'm just going to move those off to the side. Okay, so the very first part of this is, so we made these little um, kind of V, V kind of wing-like with the two. So the two points are kind of closer down here, and these are a little bit farther away. Well, we need to connect the two that are above the super duo by adding a size oops, size 11 seed bead. Got one size 11 seed bead on and go into the very next hole, the um, super duo. Now, during this whole time, we don't want to um, pull too tight because it can make it buckle a little bit if you pull too tight. So if you're a looser beater, this is perfect. If you're a tighter beater like I am, sometimes that can be a little hard. So I like to just put my thumb down and then pull, and then that keeps me from over pulling because if I just pull like this, sometimes I'll over pull. So by putting my thumb Thumb, like pinching it between I can pull it so it's snug but not super tight so for the next step we are going to add a super duo a gem duo oop oop so sorry about that let's get that lit a little bit better and then a super duo so i'm going to be going through it could go on the super duos again we can do any hole but on the um, gem duo you want to make sure that you use the bottom hole from right to left And then I'm going through the very next super duo. And it's going to make those three beads. Just let them pop in between there and lay nice and flat. And theirs are going to go just right above those other super duos just like that. then a we're going to repeat this around so the next is to add a size 11 seed bead and go through the next super duo again make sure that you are making it snug but not too tight a super duo gem duo uh, the b the second color and then a super duo go through the next super duo in the motif one seed bead go into the next super duo One super duo, one gem duo, the color color one B, one super duo, go into the next super duo in the motif. Super duo. a seed bead and go into the next super duo i don't know why i said it was a super duo that's a seed bead look at that look how pretty that's turning i'm really excited about this i like this color 
a lot. A super duo, a B, a super duo. Seed bead. Just making my way around here. A super duo, a gem duo, B, and a super duo. Go through the super duo and the motif. Trying to get that tail out of the way. A super duo. A gem duo and a super duo. One seed bead. Maybe. Super duo, a gem duo, a super duo. Do, 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 do. Look at that. We are almost there around. How beautiful this is. Get in there. Gotta lay those guys down. Come on. I'm gonna cheat and use my awl to poke those around. Well, that didn't work. So that's not cheating. Okay, there we go. Now that, now that is laying flat. All of the other ones are laying flat too. That's good. Okay, moving on to the last, is the last seed bead? I think it's the last seed bead. Yep, last seed bead on this round. We're going to have another round of seed beads in a minute, but That thread caught, Joyce. We don't want a thread caught. No. Okay. And then a super duo. B super duo. On the very last one. Make sure everybody's facing the right way. Hopefully I put all my gem duos on right. Hopefully they're laying. Perfect. There we go. I'm liking that. Very nice. Next part of this step is to go through all. You're going to go through. Um, let's see. I'm trying to. Oh, I'm off camera. Sorry about that. So I'm coming out of the soup duo here so you have to go through some beads you're going to end up over on this super duo after so it's a seed bead a super duo the top hole and then the bottom hole and the gem duo and then the super duo on the bottom hole so it's a total of five beads yep five beads can't do it all in one shebang because the holes are kind of lined up in a curve and your needles too too rigid for that right so we got to do just a few at a time or two at a time or one at a time oh good i got two at a time of that on that one and 
and I'm going to end out of this super duo here. And we are ready to step up into the second hole of this super duo. So we're going to do the same thing where we go through the second hole from right to left and let the loop fall behind the bead. So this is the last row that we are doing. There's the, we are only adding size 11 seed beads, but we're also secu securing the super duos down onto the filigree piece. So I am going to see how there's like, These like these branches, these little spokes right here. So we're gonna wrap it around this right this spoke right here. So I'm gonna go down this hole that's on the left of the bead, up the hole that's on on the right of the bead and back through the same hole of the super duo and pull that a little tighter so that it is kind of anchored onto that okay and then we are going to add a size 11 seed beads and we are going to go through the second hole of the next super duo. And we're gonna go down the hole that's on the left up the hole that's on the right, which is kind of like the center hole. And then back through this super duo. Right. Now we keep we're not adding anything else um, and we're not securing this gem duo. We're only going to be securing the super duos and adding that a size 11 so that it's kind of doubled right there. So what we're going to do though is we're going to kind of go be, we're still securing the motif onto the, the filigree by going down the hole on the right and then up move that out of the way so you can see and then up the very next hole right here so it's like kind of going to be like that and then you're ready to go through the super duo Right, and so, so far, if you look up here, you got the two threads around like this, these two legs, these here, one thread here, one thread here. That Remember, that's your loop, step up loop, but the, this is anchoring it to the filigree here and here and then it's going behind this spoke here behind the gem duo and we're ready to um, kind of repeat the process here we're going to go down 
the hole on the left of the super duo up the hole on the right of the super duo go through the hole of the super duo uh, Oh, I guess it's the whole of the the whole of the filigree on the left and the right, and now we're going through the super duo. Add a size eleven CBs to bridge over to the other super duo in the next little point, and we're gonna go down through the filigree up through the filigree and through the super duo go down through the filigree behind the filigree and over to the next this is behind the soup the gem duo and through the super duo take your time with this you'll be okay with it. it it's not too bad it's just a new technique right and we're just kind of sewing around the filigree so that we're attaching those so they're not going to flip up or anything. Adding a seed bead going from one point to the next. You know you're adding a seed bead because there's a seed bead below and the two super duos below it. So you're making that double seed bead. going through down through the filigree up through the filigree through the fire uh soft through the super duo let's just add materials that we're not using in our verbiage Joyce that's so silly 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 Okay, down the filigree to go behind it, behind this gem duo. We're just traveling around, securing these little super duo tips and adding that second C bead. Whoa, watch what hole you go through. There we go. Let's get that back into place. It's easy to accidentally pull these two hard and make that super duo go into the filigree a little bit. So loosen it up if you need to. Oh. Watch yourself and make sure that you are not catching your filigree in the wrong spot again. I'm going to have to take off my needle for this. I'm going to just take my needle off of my thread, pull it out where I need to so then I can get that into place. Let's see. I see what I did. Okay. Went and caught it through a different part of the filigree. So you got to really watch where, what part of the filigree. Because if you don't get it in, like whenever you're sewing beads onto a filigree, you kind of have to make sure that you put it through 
and not catch any of the other little spaces because it's so easy to do. And then you, when you, because when that happens, your motif gets off centered or it gets pulled, your beads get pulled in a weird direction and it's just not as happy, right? We want it to be happy. We're almost around. We're making a good progress here. Down, doo -doo. we're halfway around. Oh, oh, helps if I actually um, keep it under the camera, doesn't it? So sorry about that. Okay, I'm always tempted to try to go down the filigree at the same time when I add this. And then what happens is then I get them so that the tips of the um, super dough ends up liking to kind of poke through that filigree hole. So I'm trying not to do that. Um, so if you see me do it, I, it's a bad practice and you probably shouldn't do it yourself, but I understand because sometimes it feels like it goes quicker when you do that, right? But if we try to do it one at a time, you're more likely to get your beads set up so that they actually lay where you want them to and not have to undo things. So close, so close. We're almost there. So it's, uh, you know, this winter weather has been kind of cold and rainy and the, um, the lighting is different. So I had to figure out how to get some good light in here and it kind of seems to be working, but cannot wait for the spring and summer sunlight that comes through this room so that it looks so much it's just gives so much more light but i love winter i love fall and winter a lot it just makes it hard to film <laughs> and woohoo last seed bead last seed bead and last super duo. I'll put that last C bead on there and my last super duo to secure. Oop. Again, gotta remember to stay in it.
There we go. And then back behind. I'm just going to go behind this because there's no, like, see how I got my thread over here, but there's none here because that was where I started. I'm going to actually go ahead and come back over here there just so I can feel complete. And I am going to run through. We are done with the with the threads so I'm going to um, weave off this working thread and then we'll weave off the tail thread and then we're ready to glue so I'm just gonna get back into this super duo and I'm gonna bring it over I'm just going through to the next. You could, um, you can weave this however you want. You, you don't have to necessarily follow. But what I did is, sorry, last soup, last CB does this one, and then I secured this one. Went behind this, the filigree here. Um, went through came back up and went through the super duo CB super duo and now I'm gonna go behind to get into this hole of this one here so I'm gonna kind of come you have to to if I just went and did this here like this because there is this bead if I just went into this one the loop wouldn't go underneath so I gotta kind of go underneath that C bead and thread there Whoop. so now I'm below it and then I want to go into the bottom hole mm, looks like I'm gonna go through the bottom hole this gem duo two at the same time which is fine with me and now my, th if I play my cards right, that loop of thread should go, you gotta make sure it goes, you're gonna have to poke it like I did. So I took my needle and I poked it down in there and now it's behind that super duo so I don't have to worry about it, it's behind there. I can now take I'm coming out of the super duo there and I can now do a half hitch knot here so I'm going under the thread pull that's between the oops I pulled too far under the thread that's between the gem duo and the super duo pull until there's a small loop go through that loop that ties a knot around that thread. And then I'm gonna go into the bottom hole. Well, it's the bottom hole of the one and the top hole of the other. And now I'm back. And I could keep going and doing this, kind of like making my way around in the thread, doing half hitch knots. I'm just gonna do one more and then I'm gonna cut it because I'm happy with that. I haven't had a problem with these yet. I wore them, tried to rough it up, made them travel in my purse so that I could see how it would work. So far, they've been fine. So I'm just gonna do two knots there. As close as I can with my cutters. And now I'm going to put the needle onto the tail. Now 
This is a little trickier because it's real. It's the center, and it is um, your needle is gonna want to go through the the filigree sometimes. I kind of pushed from the back. Whoopee. Uh oh. Uh oh. Don't lose that thread. I pulled too fast. Aha. Got my loop. I'm going to go into. The next gem duo. And now I am going to let it go to the back. See, it was too hard to get it to the front. So I'm letting it go through to the back. I'm going to pull that. And then I'm going to go and take my needle and push it back through so that it's to the front again. Um, and then just go through it. And I'm going to go with just the one not i'm think that's good if you want to you could do more on some of them i did more kind of depends on how i feel if it feels kind of secure this feels pretty secure i'm pretty happy with it i don't think it's gonna be a problem um so i'm not gonna worry about it so i'm just gonna let it since i brought it to the back i'm just gonna cut it on the back side Boom, like that, right? So I'm going to take my... Oh. Okay, so I have my scratch piece of paper here. And I have... I'm going to take out some... I'm actually going to be working on two scratch pieces of paper. Because this is going to be where I'm going to place my filigree and then I'm going to put some glue on this one. So I am using two toothpicks to kind of lift it because the chitons are going, if I just lay this flat, they poke, you know, they slight the point back on the chitons kind of poke through these little holes and the, those this center hole and then these bigger holes on the edges is where I'm going to put the crystals. And since they'll poke through, if I just did it flat, it would, um, it would just, you know, kind of glue to the paper. So if I lift it up by taking two toothpicks and then I'm going to line them up. There. And then that way I can get these on there easier. You can glue these in any fashion that you want to glue them. You may find that picking them up with a pair of, like practice without the glue first. You may find that you could take your tweezers and then put them in place where you want them. That went way easier than usual for me. That was actually a miracle. Um, I'm gonna just do it with my fingers. But I find that if I put the glue on here and then try to flip it, I get it all over the place. So what I'm gonna do is actually put the glue on the hole that I want it. I'm going to start with the center. I'm going to put it kind of around the hole here. Um, and then bring the, the chiton without the glue over to and place it on the glue. 
Um, a great thing about E6000 is because of the type of glue it is, it is gap filling in a way, so it is okay. It'll kind of go into that hole a little bit and kind of hover. Um, I'm going to just put a little bit, I'm just going to do a little bit at a time. I'll put more out as I go. Uh, once it starts to dry or starts to cure, it's not really as good. So I like to add new dots for each little section. So I'm going to probably get like two chatons with this and then two or three, and then I'll now it's hard to get the center one in place like that. So I'm going to actually lift it up and it actually is going to probably be easier for me to lift it up anyway, and then place it back onto my little stand. So I just glopped it there in the center, kind of hovers in the center of that. And then I went to pop this down, use a separate toothpick to place it, not the one with the glue on it, or you're going to get a bunch of glue everywhere. I'm just going to put use this one to kind of place it down and it's going to be a-okay just like that now the one with glue i'm going to go and grab a little glue again and i'm going to go i'm going to kind of just keep that try to keep it down and i'll just press down while so I don't move the filigree piece while I'm putting the glue on. Just kind of gop that glue there. Place that on top of that glue. Use a clean toothpick to press it down. Gop that glue. This is so technical and I'm sure there's other people that glue differently and that is a-okay. Glue whatever is your comfort level. You know, I'm going to add some more glue to my paper so that I can grab a little more glue that didn't, didn't stick the way I liked it. So pop another one in place. Use my my toothpick to kind of push it now this glue takes you know some time to set uh it could take up to 24 hours to set all fully it'll start to cure but it'll or it'll start to set and then it'll cure it'll take about um 24 hours to finish curing now see I got a little bit of glue because it did come behind and it did touch and some of this so this is where while it's still kind of wet I'm gonna just kind of wipe the back a little bit with my wet paper towel or your white bead put my sticks back down and put it in here and give you know if you have to do this in Sometimes I don't like gluing all of them at once because it gets a little crazy and I get a little bit of anxiety with glue. And so therefore I'm like, okay, I'm done for right now. And I'll come back and do a couple more in a little bit, you know, and that's okay too. Don't, don't feel that you have to get all of your crystals on right now. I'm going to give myself a little more, da another dab of glue. A little small dabs of glue and might have to do you know it feels like it's wasting but I'd rather do that than have a big old mess so do a little at a time okay. kind of have to brace the piece with your hand so that it doesn't move because if I try to do this without bracing it it will move so I'm putting the glue on both of these holes here Get a chaton. Get 
use a clean one to kind of press it down into the glue. If you notice, I'm skipping. So I did two here. We have a total of nine, one for the center and two sets of four. Uh, so I'm skipping a set and then I added them and then I'm skipping this set and then I'm gonna add them. Let's move this around. And yes, some of that is going to go to the back. And I'm going to lift it up in a little bit to wipe down the ones in the back. But I'm going to get these last four on. I'm going to have to give myself another little dab of glue. Let's see if I can get this dab of glue to make all three. Probably not, and I'm not going to worry about it if I don't. We're going to try anyway, just because. There is one left over, so if you get glue on one of them kind of bad, you can always toss that one and grab another one. Because you have one to mess up. Whoops, don't want to glue that stick on there. Nope, nope, nope. And last two. Get some glue. Nope, gonna need another little dab. Fresh glue always works better. It starts to, once it gets out of that, it wants to like start curing and sometimes it just gets so stringy. So I like a little new fresh bat, little drop. That's why I do it just a little at a time. And get a clean one to press down. And one last. So I'm lifting it up just to make it easier for me right now. Sometimes it's easier to do it while it's on. Sometimes it's easier to do it when I lift it up. But I'm going to have to lift it up anyway because I want to make sure that there's no taking my wet paper towel and wiping any of the glue that's on the bottom off these ones I'm going to fold that in half and put my clean toothpick down again and another clean toothpick well mostly clean and I'm going to just lay that on top Making sure that those toothpicks are not going where the glue or the chitons are. And it's just lifting it up off of the paper so none of the glue will. Well, you can't really see it. Well, you can kind of see it. So that the glue doesn't stick to the paper. We don't have to be cleaning that up. Right? Okay. So once that is dry, you can then pick it up. I'm going to be doing it. It hasn't cured enough. We should wait a, a day before doing that. One cool thing is if you have your glue on your scratch and you have your the toothpick that has been, um, that got the glue on it, if it's like up on the paper, one way to test that these are in place is that you have this toothpick here in your glue and when you can lift it up and it li actually like I lift it up and it came off but if because it wasn't um, cure all the way but when it just stays on the paper if it's attached to the paper then it's probably all the way cured we're gonna pretend that it's cured um, we're gonna take out our jump ring we're gonna take our 
open our jump ring with our two pairs of chain nose pliers. And then I'm going to just pick out a nice little hole, center hole. Now you can do it either the center hole so that you have your crystals up and down, you know, in the up and down left to right, or you can do it in the, whoops, the center hole of one of the three that are empty. So then the crystals are kind of um, at a diagonal, which is what I'm going to choose to do. And now I can close that up and it is ready. Once the glue is all cured, it is ready to turn into a pendant or an ornament. You can just hook. If you wanted to, you can either hook your ornament hook to that jump ring if you're going to add that jump ring. Or you don't need that jump ring and you can just hook your wire di directly to the the um one of the loops the holes uh with this you can just put this on a leather cord or chain or silk cord in my earring i just um hooked the earring directly though if you need it to go dangle a little bit further you may decide to put like two small jump rings just to sometimes um the, like this is a longer ear hook so because of that it dangles better if you have a shorter ear hook you may need that length so it clears the side of your cheek better I noticed I'm gonna let put these back on here so that that can dry like that Thank you. I hope you had fun with me today. I enjoyed beading um, with you always. If you make one with us, um, please share on our Facebook page or on our Just Beaded Happy Beaters. We'd love to see who made this, whether you made it from one of our kits or supplies at home. We would love to see it. Um, have a fantastic holiday season and we will see you next time. Bye.